Welcome to Women Awakening. I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Indeed, we are changing the world one woman at a time. I get the opportunity to bring to you women that I love, women that inspire me, women that I have watched or witnessed transform their lives on multiple occasions, all in honor of being in high service. So my guest today has been my friend for over three decades, almost four actually, and um, I am just in awe of what she has done with her life. So her name is Shamin Bernard, and let me read her bio to you. She has been in private practice as a counselor coach for over 24 years, helping people and corporations thrive. She is the creator of transformational toolkits designed for individuals, couples, groups, and organizations. The skill, strategies, and solutions in her toolkits help people experience an authentic life lived to its fullest potential. Simultaneously, Shimin spent over 20 years as a casting director in the entertainment industry, working with major studios and networks in both film and television. As an independent contractor, she trained her staff on clear communication tools and personal accountability. Shimin has coached actors on how to be in the industry with integrity, power, and clarity. She's dedicated to the upliftment of the human condition through authenticity, unconditional love, and infinite compassion for all. She is steadfastly committed to a life of service. Welcome, Shimin. Mm, thank you. I'm, I'm so grateful to read this. You, you, know, you know, we live our lives and, and we're just going from one thing to the other and we don't really realize the impact and the power that every aspect of our life has. <laughs> So I, I, first thing I want to ask you, though, is, is like, where did you come from as a child? You know, I mean, um, what was it instilled in you that said, I can move forward and create great things? You know, I, from this perspective, I know that I was raised by um, two parents who really wanted to <clears throat> make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, in the ways that they could. So my father was a Renaissance, Renaissance man. He was a pilot, a race car driver. Mm -hmm. He was a forest ranger in the Sierra Nevadas. Um, everywhere he went, we went. And he was usually the first black man to be any of those things in wherever he was. Um, and so my parents raised me uh, that we could not, did not need to be denied anything, that anything that we wanted, we could go after. So they integrated schools with me, <laughs> you know, and because I was born right, I started school right after Brown versus Board of Education. Um, and so I learned that I, what I was taught is that I was as good as anyone, that I could do anything that I set my mind to. My father particularly was really encouraging about, you know, what is it you want, then that's what you should go after. Um, and my mother just had this fierceness of spirit that, you know, nobody was going to hold her back. So I, I think that's kind of my origin, if that answers your question. Yeah, well, it does. And, you know, and I come from, uh, you know, a, a family of five generations of fierce women and strong personalities and, and overcoming odds, you know, and you and I both have come from places where, you know, our parents struggled on certain um, platforms to 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 be healthy to to be vital and so i'm interested because i had to find within myself the strength to create the life i wanted and it's like what did you do to find that strength within yourself you know for me it was it was a little um unconscious initially i i had i was 17 and i was a mother unexpectedly <laughs> And so my mission became becoming the person that this little person could be proud of, but also to create a life for us that was beyond what everyone said was going to be possible for us. Because once I had him, I was told my life was over mm -hmm. and I was determined to prove people wrong. And so, you know, by 26, I was in college um, on my own and I put myself through four years of college and I took him with me <laughs> to my classes and, you know, involved him and, um, you know, that was really the beginning of my journey. And that's where I found my career, the casting career. 
Um, and from that, I, I really began a spiritual journey. Um, from college, I was exposed to something that really um, just sparked my interest, really helped me understand that I had a personal relationship with something greater than me. And that took me on a journey that led to becoming a licensed pastoral counselor through my church, going to get a master's in spiritual psychology and all while still being a casting director and being a casting director became my ministry, not my job. Yeah, that's how we met. I, I remember, you know, I was trying very desperately to <laughs> get my face known in Hollywood and, and you were casting for a, a, a student um, project. And, um, and I walked in and little did I know in that moment that I was walking into a lifetime friendship and also walking into being a witness to you begin your beginnings there to becoming the president, yes, of CSA, the Casting Society, of, is that what's called? The Casting Society of America. I yeah. was the first African-American, I think, and I think up until this point, I'm probably the only African-American that's ever been president of Casting Society. Yeah. And, and, and you know and, that you were the first person I ever auditioned? No! <laughs> I just had that memory later after we talked last week. Uh, you were, you were, your audition was the first audition I'd ever held. Oh, well, I'm really grateful I got the job. And, I, <laughs> and I'm really you grateful. You got the job in the, in the show and you got the job as my friend. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> so, you know, what I love about this is like, ladies, so single mother, putting herself through school, finding her career, uh, opening to her spiritual awareness, you know, becoming uh, in, in, in high service. And so uh, it wasn't just some straight route, right? I mean, it, it, there was a lot of twists and turns that went mm -hmm. on here. And so, so what do you think is the biggest challenge um, that you've experienced in your life in terms of staying true to self? Oh, my biggest challenge was, was and sometimes still is, um, being swayed or concerned by others' opinions, mm -hmm. thinking that other people have dominion over me, thinking that someone else knows more than I do about me, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and not holding true to who I am. And it's been a real journey to learn how to hold steady and to really appreciate the person that I look in the mirror and see every day. But that's been a challenge all my life. And so what that's looked like is I've chosen men who didn't see me, who didn't honor me, who didn't respect me. And I thought that was okay because I didn't think that I was worthy of anything else. Totally get that. Been there, done that. Right. <laughs> and, and, and so when you, you know, you work with a lot of women, you work with leaders, you work with people on spiritual path. You know, what do you think women are struggling with the most today? You know, I find it's the same issue. It's that self, sense of self-worth, that sense of enough. I am enough, you know, and, you know, and it's also for me, one of my favorite pieces of, of work to do with clients is about expectations. I really think that this society sets us up to have expectations of other people that can't possibly be met and then we're disappointed and resentful. And so one of the biggest pieces of work that I do with my clients is learning how to release expectations and to recognize that each person is operating in their own world. They're doing it in the, under their rules and they're not doing it to hurt you. They're just doing what they do and how you respond to that what you choose to do in response to their behavior is, is the only thing that you have control over. Absolutely. So we both went to the University of Santa Monica, the master's program, and it was like, how you deal with the issue is the only issue. And, uh, and so I, I really, uh, I, I want to talk just a moment about friendship because uh, to have a, a friendship that lasts over three decades, you know, um, takes clarity, communication, honesty, authenticity. Um, and so what have you learned about friendship? That's such an interesting question because um, 
what I know today is so different than what I knew 40 years ago when I met you. And uh, I used to think that friendship just sustained itself, that it would always be there, um, that it was a connection that just would never break. Uh, I have learned that it has to be nurtured. It has to be tended. Um, I have learned for myself that, it, that reciprocal relationships are very important to me, that each of us supports one another. So it's not one of us <clears throat> always in crisis, <clears throat> excuse me, and the other person coming to the rescue. Um, it, it's, it's each of us have it holding that container for the other to share the good and the bad. It's being that safe place. It's having time to laugh together and to play together. And that, um, that to me has become so important, you know, just being able to laugh and to enjoy the company, especially of another woman, um, has become of utmost importance to me. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting, ladies, because Shamin and I were in a prayer group what, close to 20 years, we were, we were together, we grew up together, we went through birth, death, divorces, illnesses, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and what you just said is just so important, because we prayed together, we laughed together, we created together, you know, we held each other accountable. I remember um, one time I was uh, going for this audition and I didn't get to the final callback. And I was remember being in my kitchen and I was telling the ladies how unfair it was. And I was just in this thing and they, everybody was looking at me going, well, what if it wasn't yours? I'm like, oh man, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear, yes, it was a terrible industry. <laughs> and, <laughs> So, you, you know, you, so then you won't appreciate what I tell actors in my workshops. It's either your job or it's not. And if it is your job, you cannot lose it. You can come in and throw up on us and you won't lose the job. But on the other hand, if it's not your job, you can't make us hire you. Right. There's nothing. You can do the best audition in the world, but if it's not your job, you cannot get it. So your only job is to go in there and shine your light and plant the seed. Right. Well, you know what? And isn't that what you tell the people, you know, in, in the, the, the coaching and counseling that you do? It's the same thing. It's like, it's, it's yours or it's not. Yeah. You bring your best, you bring yeah. your best self, and then you just let the universe do what it does. Yes. So I, before I asked you my final question, I, I want you to let people know how to find you and the amazing work that you do. So how, what's your website? Where are you on social media? How do they find you? Um, the, my website is shaminbernard.com. Really easy. <laughs> um, and, <clears throat> and I'm on Facebook, but I'm because it, it's kind of more of a, I'm not a really social media. I, I'm not as visibly visible so in social media as I'd like to be. I'm just now starting to get into Instagram. So I'm on Instagram as well. But that's about it. I'm, I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> At this point in my life, I'm choosing where I want to show up. And that isn't it. <laughs> I totally get that. So Lady Shemin is C-H-E-M-I-N. Bernard is B-E-R-N-A-R-D. So my last question for you is the same question I ask everyone at the end of my podcast. What is the one thing you want women to know about awakening? You know, I thought about this question um, and I, I believe, you know, I have a real uh, deep faith in the belief that everything is always working together for my highest and best good. And so in terms of awakening, I have to believe that every, every part, every aspect of my life has been in service to my highest good, that everything that I've done, every experience I've had, even when it seemed darkest, it has been in service to something greater that I couldn't see right then. You know, there's a, you know, the old people used to say this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, I really um, hold that as sacred because it does pass. When I think about some of the worst times in my life, they've passed and it's made me, it's strengthened me, it's built me into who I am today. And so as I awaken to my greater yet to be, I know that every step has brought me to this moment in time and it will continue to grow me and that I'm never done. 
that my awakening is always happening and that there's always something available to me as I open to it. I live in the limitless possibilities. I live in an infinite universe with limitless possibilities. And I believe that with all my heart. And it shows up, the evidence of that shows up in my life every day. And you know, I know that about you and mm -hmm. I've witnessed it for a very long time. And so I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so grateful that I got to introduce you to, to my tribe and excited about the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> So ladies, thank you for being here. Um, please come back often. We, we frequently put up new content and new interviews. Please subscribe, you know, tell your friends, share the podcast with you and, you know, give us your comments. We want to know how you feel about these interviews and the amazing things that the women have to say. I want to remind you that you're magnificent. I want to remind you that you're powerful and dynamic, that you're a unique imprint. No one else like you anywhere. And you are on this planet at this moment because you are essential. I love you. I will see you next time. Many, many blessings.